Well, well, hello, did I say it early? No, I think I'm on cue. Hey, everybody, Dylan here, and sorry in advance on how much filler is going to be in this video. There's only five matches announced and or officially going to happen on this Backlash event. So we're going to start off the filler event by saying sorry for being gone so long. Mental illnesses suck ass. Long story short, the this was supposed to be uploaded yesterday. There's a lot of videos that were supposed to be uploaded within the past couple of weeks. They're going to be like spammed throughout the next week if you want to tune in. I'd appreciate it. But now I'm going to get into the main... Um, the main theme of the video. I almost said the main juices. I used to do that as a running, but anyway, let's get into the, the video. So to start off the show, we got the WWE Women's Championships on the line as the champions of the Kabuki Warriors, Asuka and Kari Sane, are taking on the challengers of Bianca Belair and Jade Cargill. So who do I think is going to win off the bat? I think Jade and Bianca are going to win, but if they keep it on the Kabuki Warriors, I could see this being a way... To have, like, Bianca betray Jade somehow for losing due to the fact she's, like, a rookie or something or like that. But if you want to keep the hype around Jade Cargill, you got to keep the undefeated streak alive. I mean, like, if you get rid of the streak, what does she have? She's a rookie that is still kind of green in the rain, you know? I, I like Jade. Guy like me personally likes Jade. And I think she's doing amazing work for the little time that she's been in the ring. But they need to keep the mystique behind her. They need to Goldberg her as much as possible. Give her, give her the W. And if they've since they put her in this position, give her the title with Bianca, I guess. And that can set up something later on where Bianca gets jealous and costs them the match. So that way, it still protects Jade when she ultimately loses. But she, you could say she actually loses then. After that, we have Randy Orton and Kevin Owens taking on the bloodline of Solo Sokoa and Tama Tonga. I'm going to call it the Bloodline 2.0. So, interesting notes on this is, uh, as my old, I call it old, but last night's SmackDown review will show, uh, Paul Heyman added some interesting notes to it. Um, not to this match, but to the whole Bloodline thing. So, I, obviously, Solo and Tama are going to win. But I can't wait to see where this whole bloodline thing goes. And I'm calling it now. I'll even say it on the review. I'm calling it now. Heyman is going to betray. After that, we get the WWE Women's Championship bet match between Bailey, the champ, versus Naomi versus Tiffany Stratton. Obviously, maybe not obviously. I think internally Bailey's going to win. But this is going to set up a good heel turn for Naomi considering they're doing this whole like... Oh, her and Bailey are really good friends. They're going to stay friends forever. Like, bullshit like that. So, that, that would be a good heel turn for Naomi. Give her a new, interesting look to her character. Um, I want Tiffany to win, but give, give it time. She'll, she'll win a title eventually. Just give it time on that. Our second to last match is Damian Priest, the world heavyweight champion. Taking on Jey Uso, and he's defending his title. Where, obviously, Priest is going to win, but I need Jey Uso to win a main event title. Like, if he's living up to this whole main event Jey thing, he's got to win. It doesn't even have to be the World Heavyweight Championship, right? It can literally just be, like, an IC or US title. If he wins the World title, I'm not going to complain. But he needs, like, IC to US Championship. Like, see, he needs, he needs to win something, please. Then we have for our main event, we have, ironically enough, not main event Jey Uso. We have Cody Rhodes defending his undisputed WWE Universal Championship against AJ Styles. Cody's going to win, but this is going to be an amazing match. I can't wait to see what AJ is going to do. And honestly, I think this is going to this or the women's triple threat match has potential to be match of the night, honestly, in my opinion. I'm excited to see where this goes. Shout out to Papa H, though, for doing, like, two women's matches and three men's matches to try to make it somewhat even. Like, good on you, man. All right. I really can't stall this short video any longer, so I can't wait to see Backlash. Um, <coughs> it literally, the pre-show is going on as I'm editing and uploading this. But, yeah, 
Uh, this is going to be a little bit scheduled if you want to hear that real quick since I have to stall a little bit. But otherwise, this video is over with. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you want to hear more on wrestling. Um, here's going to be the channel history. Or not history. The upload schedule for a little bit. So, today after this review, I'm going to finish the episode of SmackDown. As soon as I finish editing that, that will be uploaded. So, either today or tomorrow. Then, after SmackDown's uploaded, I'm going to upload the Backlash review. Uh, in the process of that time, I also have the draft, uh, literally the draft episode of Monday Night Raw, that will be uploaded. I may push that off to Monday. I don't know. It would make sense. But that will be uploaded too. And then we got the draft episode of SmackDown that should have been uploaded yesterday that will be uploaded and then we got a bunch of King of the Rings. I think if I can stick to this, I'm going to make next week the King of the Ring week. Why not? Uh, I was going to upload it throughout seven like Saturdays and Sundays. Seven weeks worth of Saturdays and Sundays. But here we are. It's too close to the King of the Ring to do that. So I'll just make up for lost time. Anyway, thanks for listening to me rant towards that end. All right. Bye, everybody.